So now I'm going to I'm going to take a fairly large brush. I've got my number six sable, and I'm going to use clear water, and um, I'm going to try to just float water into the area that I just painted. I don't want to brush exactly because I don't want to move the paint around. All I want to do is reactivate it so that I can lift a little bit of it and lighten the value. That should be good. So now I'm going to use my paper towel and I'm, I'm going straight in, straight back out. Yes, that's working nicely. Again, I want to avoid any kind of motion by going straight in and coming straight back out. I'm lifting, but I'm not moving the paint around. That's good. Just a little suggestion of, of the the individual fibers that make up the the feathers, the plumage on the on the bird's breast. It's it's actually a little dark, but I, I think as the very final stage in this, I'm going to go in with with some some opaque white and brighten up some of the the passages. Some of the white of the paper is not really white enough, and um, as I it, one of the things that I'll do is I'll use my grainer again with with some white, and I can I can sort of go in the opposite direction. And I think between the two of them, it'll it'll cr create a nice effect. All right, I'm gonna darken the shadows a little bit on the legs. Um, I was using my Da Vinci or my Winsor Newton Payne's gray for this. I don't want to have really dark shadows here because I don't want to call too much attention to the to the feet and legs. They're they're really not that important, but I want them to to uh, to be detailed enough to 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 hold their own in the in the context of the painting. So by glazing over the areas that I painted before, it darkens the shadows that I already painted in and creates new shadows. I think that's good. Eh, a little more right where this leg disappears into the body. And I think I'll deepen this up just a little bit too. Good. All right, so now I'm going to go back to my, my tail feathers. Um, I'm going to use, I'm going to use the Da Vinci Payne's Gray, which is more neutral. The, um, the Windsor Newton Payne's Gray is a little on the blue side, and the Da Vinci Payne's Gray is more of a neutral gray. So I'm painting in the shadow that's being cast by the by the the feather that's laying on top. Now I'm going to just float in some water on the on the edge of, away from the from the upper feather. And then lift with a thirsty brush. Again, this is a my double lot, so it's doesn't have a whole lot of capacity for carrying water. I think I'll 
use my paper towel. Flirting with losing the weight of the paper there. All right, I lifted more than I wanted to, so now I will go back in with a little bit of Payne's Gray. It works kind of nicely, actually. I don't really need to worry too much about the edge of this white passage on the top feather. I'm going to just define it a little bit better on this end and then let it disappear. Kind of like the softness on this edge, but I didn't like the transition of being so abrupt. Okay, um, the bird is coming along quite nicely. I, I think I'm about ready to, uh, to, to leave it alone and um, I, I want to develop the, the perch a little bit more, although it's pretty good. I, it doesn't need to have a, a ton of detail because it's the, the star of the show is the bird, not the perch. Um, so I don't want to put so much detail into the perch that it draws the eye away from the bird. And then the other thing that I need to do is to decide what, if anything, to do with the background. Um, and uh, now that the bird is, is pretty well developed and the perch is getting much more well developed, it's, it's a lot easier to make judgments about how well or poorly the background works to support the painting. It's a little busy. Um, the, the salt that I, that I sprinkled into the wet, the wet wash, um, it's, it calls a lot of attention to itself. I'd, I'd kind of like for it to be a little bit more uh, unified, more um, soft edges and uh, as far as the value is concerned, it works okay for the most part. Um, I've got values that, that help the bird and the perch to stand out and create separation, but uh, there are a few places where it might benefit from a um, little value modification. Um, so I think I think I'll start taking a stab at, at the background. Um, and um, to do this, the first thing that I want to do is to float in some clear water. For this, I'm going to use my, um, my one stroke. This is a This is a fairly inexpensive brush that I got at AC Moore. It's a low, low Cornell. Um, it's a one inch, one stroke. Uh, the thing that I like about it is it carries a lot of water um, and it doesn't tend to shed too much. Um, I have some, some pretty nice ox hair brushes that I've had for a very long time. This is, this is one here. It's got longer bristles. It's not quite as full as the low Cornell. It also carries quite a bit of water, but this, this has become my favorite brush for this kind of work. So I'm going to use the, the water from the clear side of the, of the well, and I'm going to carefully paint in to the brush or the breast of the, of the bird. I'm not going to crowd it too much. I want to try to take advantage of what I like to call the hyd hydraulic barrier 
Um, once I've wet this, I can float water into the into the area that I wet. And as long as I don't break the barrier that I just created by painting up to the to the edge of the bird, the water will stay on the wet side of the of that edge. And I can I don't need to be nearly as careful. I can just kind of put water close and it will pool and flow and it'll stop where I created that dry edge. And if this one stroke is too big, if I'm uh, running the risk of, of making a mess of things, especially where there's a fair amount of detail, like on the, on the back, on the edges of the, where, where there are negative spaces, spaces that are kind of um, pointy, um, this this brush would not be appropriate. I can always use a, a, a round sable brush for those areas and um, once I've painted them with clear water I can then use my my big one stroke brush to uh, keep it wet to allow the the paint to reactivate so that I can then either float pigment into it or lift. And I, th I think in general my I think my strategy is going to be more to lift paint than to add paint. All right, I, th I th kind of like this over here. I, I'm not so crazy about this area here, which is where, where I just wet. So I'm going to keep wetting this. I didn't go down close to the to the perch or the or the foot or leg because again, I I kind of like what's going on there. It's just in in this area here. I I really don't care for what I did. So I'm going to. Continue to wet this. Whoops, I just slopped some paint into the bird's head, which I didn't want to do. And you can see the, the paper is swelling and, and it's starting to create the hills and valleys. So if I if I introduce more paint to this. It's just going to exacerbate the, the problem that I've already got going on, where the water is, or the paint has pooled in the in the valleys. All right, I'm using a thirsty brush now because this is a big brush. It can lift quite a bit of of water. Now I'm I'm using this to um, gently move the paint around. It has reactivated and it's smoothing things out quite nicely, and it won't damage the the surface of the paper because it's quite a soft brush.
See if I can level out this these dark streaks that got created by the water or the paint pooling in the valleys. I'm going to use my paper towel to lift some of the, the darker pigments in those areas. I like this better. The, the hard edges of the that were left by the salt have softened quite a lot. They're still there, but they've been pushed back into the into the background quite a bit more than they were before. So the, the background is more uniform in terms of color, texture, and value. I, I have a dark passage here that I kind of like. Um, it's maybe a little dark, a little muddy. Um, I think I'll wet that and see if I can make it less muddy. And I think I'd like to add a little bit of color. This, this whole background is a little on the on the muddy side. It's I, it's not bad actually. Um, but let's see. I think I'll float a little bit of blue in. Um, this is my ultramarine blue. I don't want it to be blue, but I do want it to have a little bit of, of color. All right, I'm going to let that dry. I think it's an improvement. It's um, a little more unified. I still have pigment pooling, which I'm not particularly fond of. That's better. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to walk away from it, let it dry. There's a lot of 
wet paper there and if I continue working on it I know I'm going to just make a mess of it but there's um, some nice variation in in color and value um, some very soft edges which I kind of like it's probably not done but it's um, I think it's an improvement over what it was before so I'm going to call that done for now and uh, let it dry and come back later today or tomorrow. Thanks for watching.